So I think this is a simplified formula, and honestly, if you're a copywriter, <clears throat> probably have an app maybe, or some kind of a program that you can just measure the skid marks, plug it in, and that would tell you the speed. That's how a lot of these kind of things work. Like there's some good math, good physics behind it, and then when you trickle that down to the end user, it's often just the app that you put stuff into some version of that. So, anyway, this one's quick, but good practice. It's also good to know that they can do this. So, How far is 190 feet? Yeah. Like, relate it to something. Yeah, it's a, it's a ways, right? Like, if you think about skidding 190 feet, um, Trying to think of something like in our around our campus that would be several rows of parking, right? Probably maybe three rows of parking. So it's a ways. It's a good reminder that when you follow, how far should you follow somebody? Those of you who are drivers. Uh, it depends on how fast. True, so we don't typically recommend following a certain distance, but what? How many of you drive a car? One. How many can you drive? Two people? Okay. You said kind of. Did you get your Miata? No, I'm getting it. Then it's there? Ready to pick up? Well, anyway, the recommendation is two seconds. So instead of doing a distance, which is almost impossible to calculate while you're driving, follow two seconds behind the person in front of you. And that, like you said, that scales distance as you get faster, right? So two seconds at 67 is a lot farther than two seconds at 20. So, and it, plus it's easy to count. You watch the car in front of you go past something and you start counting one, 1,000, two, 1,000. Okay, I'd say if they um, aren't that far or farther. Anyway, so what we're going to do today is you're going to come up with a code and, well, let me back up. You're going to encode a message that somebody else in the classroom is going to get. And the way to do that is going to be using function stuff that we did this week and last, end of last week. So stuff on your test. So it's nothing new. It's just a new application, kind of a fun way to use it and give you a kind of an illustration of how it can be useful. So you're each going to get a sheet that looks like this one. I may mean, I need you to put that away now so you can follow. Okay. And your encryption key for us is going to be a function that you get to make up. Okay? And what you'll do, before I say that, I want you to make a, a decently challenging function, but not one that nobody can decrypt, okay? So the person who gets your sheet will need to be able to decrypt your message using the inverse function. And so if you make yours super weird, like nobody will be able to do it. So first thing, you're going to come up with a message. So think, think of a message. And uh, in terms of criteria, so this is not like a one or two word message. It's not hello. Or it's, it's, I want it to be at least one sentence, preferably more. Right? And then you can argue, well, a sentence can be two words. I don't want two word sentences. Okay? So. Let's do a good sentence um, that you can do something that shares something about you that people can guess, okay? And we're going to guess who we have. So, uh, I don't know, let's say Katie loves to go water skiing, okay? And so she could encode 
I enjoy water skiing in the summer or something. And we would have to get some of this. Does that make sense? Or you can maybe share an experience. I have gone to Paris three times. And we can get something like that. Right? It doesn't have to just be a character trait, but something about you that people may not necessarily know, but might be able to guess in your message. And then we'll, once we find all these, um, we'll decide who they are. So that means don't put your name on here yet. You can do it at the end, but not yet. And at the end, both people are going to put their name. So the original coder and then the decoder will both put their name on there. Anyway, so second step is come up with a function. And so we're, we're going to call this your encryption key. And you can letter it whatever you want. Like we usually do F, but feel free to do any letter, like E of H or whatever. Who cares? Okay. So I'm going to work through a quick example to show you what you'll be doing, just so you kind of get it, because this sheet mostly just has you do the work and doesn't explain it a lot. So I'm going to do E for encryption of L for letters, okay, or E of M or whatever you want to do. Okay, so encryption is a function of letters, so we have to just come up with a cool looking function. So it, that's decryptable, right? So I wouldn't do sine, cosine, tangent, log, or exponential, we haven't done those yet. Probably quadratic based on that quiz problem and review problem, I would avoid it as well. Not that we couldn't do it. So what do you think? Help me come up with one. Throw something out. Huh? Yeah. L squared minus 3 squared or something. Okay? Can we decrypt that? Should be able to. I guess I could just write 9 instead of 3 squared. But Okay? I'll just use this one for now. Okay, so then each... The way you're going to encrypt your message is that we assign a letter number to each letter. And it just goes in order. So, like, A is 1. And then it goes all the way through, 26 letters of the alphabet, and then a space is 27. So in your message, you're going to have spaces. Make sure you put them in there, or the person decrypting it will run their letters all together, and it won't make sense. So let's think of our message. What would you like to say? Huh? Uh, I like ice cream. I like it. Let's do it. And capitals and stuff, don't worry about that. Okay? So here's how that'll work. I is letter 9. So you will take I, plug it in here, and get a value. So 9... Huh? Yeah, so 9 squared minus... 9 squared minus 9, and then we need to cube root that. Remember, what is the uh, exponent for a cube root? That's a quick way, if you decide to do this, that's a quick way to do it on your calculator. Yeah, so to the 1 third, right? And you'll get 4.16. Okay? So then our first, our code starts reading like this, 4.16. And that's the letter I. Okay, now we do L. L is letter 12. So 12 squared minus 9 to the 1 third. And that's 5.199. So 
So, oh, I forgot to do the space, like I told you. So, I'm going to write that over here. 5.199. We need a space in between. So, space is 27. 27 squared minus 9 to the 1 third. And we get 8.963. Okay, so make sure that you leave enough room that people know that that's a new, co a new letter. Okay? So... This is, le this is legitimate cryptography. Like, if we drop this in the hallway, people are not going to know how to decrypt it, right? It's a coded message that most people aren't going to be able to decrypt because they don't know what we're doing. So, one thing to keep in mind, actually, that will save you some time because I heard you say, wow, that's a lot. So, grab your calculator. And I'll show you how you can use it to make this faster. I assume yours can do it, but I guess I don't know. Okay. So, if you go to y equals, and remember this is where we can plug in equations, right? So, just do this with me. We want to do the cube root, so hit math, and it's number four. So cube root of x squared minus nine. I'll wait for everybody to get that plugged in. Do you not have one? Okay. So instead of graphing, like we're, we're not interested this time in what it looks like, but we want values. So if you hit second table, you can see values coming in here. But we don't necessarily want to use the values that it is giving us. So if you go to uh, second window, right above window is table settings, second window, and arrow down to ask, or to independent, and then hit ask. So independent remembers your x variable. If you highlight ask, it's going to ask you what you want instead of just giving you letters or giving you numbers to plug in. So now when we go back to table, you can see it's blank and you can enter. So, like the first one, I was 9, and then space was 27, and then L was 12, I again, we don't need to put it in, he said I like ice cream, right? So, and then K, I don't know what K is, must be 11, yeah. Okay, 11, so that's faster. Everybody good on that? Okay. So, we're going to... Everybody's going to um, come up with your message, and then your function, and then encode your message. Once we get there, I'll tell you what's next. So the overview is we're going to fold paper airplanes, fly them around, go find one, decrypt it. Okay? And I'm going to do one too. So. Now, on the sheet, like I said, don't put your name for the decoded, or for the encoded message, okay? Don't put your name on it. Any questions? Okay, one thing to note, when you go to plug these back in the encoded, or the decoded decryption key, you're gonna get close to stuff, it's not gonna be perfect, so, and it's because I did the cube root. So if you can come up with a function that only produces whole numbers, that would be nice for your person who's decoding your message. Be creative and see if you can come up with some cool stuff. That was my example. Oh.
<clears throat> you can make up whatever you want. Come up with your... What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know Olivia Bull? Oh my god, Olivia is that? Yes. Of course she did. Of course. You do though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, are we going to cut this? No. Oh, so don't write what you're going to put? Oh, yeah, don't put your message on the paper because then people can just read it. And your letters are on the back. <laughs>